Hello everyone, today I'm going to share the results of the experiment of switching from cheap instant ocean salt to expensive tropic marine pro reef salt in my reef tank. Hello and welcome back everyone to Amra Azul TV. All right, so uh, I've been doing this experiment over the past uh, four months where I've uh, replaced the typical salt that I use, which is the cheapest salt that I, I could find, the uh, instant ocean, just a regular purple bucket. And I've been doing uh, regular daily water changes with uh, the most expensive salt that I could find, uh, which is the Tropic Moraine Pro Reef. Uh, so just for comparisons in Canada, the Instant Ocean is about $60, the Tropic Marine is about $130. And so over the past four months, I've been doing daily 2.5 liter water changes on my 250 liter uh, uh, Red Sea Reef for 250. And I've also done uh, uh, for several uh, weeks uh, a, a much larger water change. So. Uh, over the past four months with all of the cumulative amount of water change that I've done, the water in my tank is now switched from 100% instant ocean to almost 95 uh, tropic moraine. And so uh, I'm gonna go through a series of comparisons uh, that will deal with how this change have affected my tank. I'm gonna first tell you a little bit about kind of uh, the cost benefit analysis, how much you get from uh, uh, each uh, uh, each bucket and the kind of relative cost per, uh, per liter or per gallon. And then we're going to go through some parameters. I did test my tank uh, as I switch uh, using ICP testing. And then I'm just going to show you pictures of my corals so you could judge for yourself whether the change has had a, a, a substantial effect, a visible effect, where you could you know, look in the tank and actually say, oh, yes, it looks things look a lot better with this salt. All right, let's get started. All right, just to make sure that we're comparing uh, apples to apples, uh, uh, the Tropic Moraine salt is actually a little bit more concentrated. So you need less of it to make, uh, let's say 10 liters of 35 uh, 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 PPT uh, salt water. And uh, the cost in Canadian is a little bit more than double. So the Tropic Moraine is 130 Canadian versus uh, about 60 Canadian for the instant ocean. But you do get more salt in the Tropic Moraine bucket. The end result is you actually get about uh, 80 more liters of salt water and about uh, or 30 gallons of salt water with the Tropic Moraine. Uh, so the Tropic Moraine is more concentrated, there's more of it in the bucket, but it costs more than double. So the end result is when you actually do the calculation of the cost per liter or the cost per gallon, it turns out that the Tropic Moraine is just a little bit under double. So if you're using Tropic Moraine in your, uh, in your tank, you're Pay, pay, paying essentially a little bit less than twice as much than if you were using the cheap instant ocean. So does this uh, doubling, almost doubling in price have a difference in terms of the health of your corals or the parameters that you have in your tank? Let's find out. Okay guys, so I did an ICP test before and after I switched. So these are the parameters of my tank with instant ocean and here are the parameters of my tank with the Tropic Marine uh, Pro Reef. And a caveat of this is obviously, uh, this is levels of uh, the parameters uh, and, uh, and elements in my water in my system. These are not the tests done on the uh, freshly mixed salt water. Uh, this is important because these levels are not just a function of what came in the salt, but uh, it's a function of what came in the salt and how much my tank is using up the, uh, the elements in the material. So uh, uh, I didn't want to actually do a test of the purely mixed salt water because uh, the people have done this before and I'm going to send links uh, to a really interesting article that has done ICP testing on a whole bunch of uh, pure salts. Uh, so this is just for me to figure out whether using a specific salt is going to change any of my core parameters over time. So we're going to start, we're going to go uh, through uh, the section. So the first section is unwanted heavy metals. Th these are actually not something that I'm concerned that came with both salts because for the most part they're, uh, uh, they're done, uh, they're mixed pretty well and there is some kind of quality control that catches uh, unwanted heavy metals, at, at least you would hope so. Uh, and typically these things show up as contaminants from other things in your tank. 
and uh, before uh, switching in the instant ocean I, I had essentially no heavy metal uh, here I tested really po uh, high for tin and that might suggest that I'm either I I have a, some rusty magnets although typically if you have like rusty metal you get contamination of several metals not just a single one it could also be from some of the uh, carob sea rocks uh, that I added so I added some uh, kind of artificial rocks and and these could have some elements so I'm just gonna skip over the heavy metal ones and uh, let's just focus on the macro and the micro elements so these because these are the things that I, I did expect to kind of change uh, my hope was that switching to this more expensive salt that I'm going to have uh, kind of a higher concentration of uh, uh, some of the macro elements and um, and the trace elements that are going to be important for uh, coral health and col coloration. So what did I find uh, before? Uh, my, you know, sodium. Uh, I actually let, let's let's do uh, one by one. So sodium before and after are pretty much the same. So the switch had no effect on the sodium. Uh, calcium is uh, it's a little bit different. Although I'm I'm not really sure how whether like four almost 460 is really significantly different from 475. Uh, actually, we know that the we know that uh, the tropic moraine has lower levels of calcium relative to uh, it's more like natural seawater relative to the instant ocean which is a little bit elevated but I'm actually dosing calcium so I, I expect both of these parameters to be the same. Uh, magnesium before uh, uh, switching I actually had a crazy amount of magnesium uh, if you remember uh, from uh, several several months ago I was I had a bad magnesium test kit so I, I thought my levels of, uh, of magnesium were low and I was dosing magnesium to uh, uh, to compensate but it turned out that my low levels were actually based on a bad test kit so I was overdosing magnesium so I've actually stopped dosing magnesium altogether and you see now that my magnesium levels are going towards kind of uh, typical for the calcium ratio the, the calcium that I'm uh, uh, keeping so the the rule of thumb is you want your magnesium to be to be about three times uh, the calcium uh, or a little bit over but again this is not something that I'm expecting uh, uh, to have uh, been affected by switching so here is where we come to the interesting part so potassium uh, we know it's important for coral coloration uh, before I had 422 uh, and after switching to Tropic uh, Marine it's uh, 416 so it's gone down a little bit but probably not significant uh, this is bromide uh, this levels I would say went down by about 20 percent so uh, 108 to 87 again not sure if this is really substantial uh, this is boron we went from 3.8 to 3.4 about the same I would say uh, strontium uh, it went down from 8.8 .8 to 8.4 I kind of expected to see a little bit more strontium uh, uh, we know strontium is an important cofactor for uh, coral calcification I had hoped that the tropic moraine pro reef will give me a little bit more strontium but uh, that wasn't the case and is this uh, sulfur sulfur uh, about the same uh, uh, 950 911 so not a big difference not 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 something that you could say aha you know the more expensive salt has uh, you know more strontium or or uh, 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 more uh, boron or something like that uh, not not the case uh, let's go to the lithium group uh, so here we have uh, lithium uh, and you can see that my lithium levels are high in both cases and, and again this I believe has, was something related to adding some uh, uh, adding some uh, of the dry rock the artificial rock or possibly uh, something resting in, in, in my tank so I kind of have to uh, uh, you know I, I'm, I'm not really worried I've, I've read a little bit about uh, kind of high lithium and and uh, and for when for most people it doesn't seem to have an effect uh, nickel uh, we went from 0.62 to 0 I guess you could argue that's a positive change uh, this is uh, uh, huh, I'm, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce it uh, but it's another element in the lithium group and we went from 4.6 to uh, 1.12 so there's been a reduction I'm not entirely sure whether this is a positive uh, change or not uh, then we go to the iodine group uh, uh, so uh, these are some kind of minor trace elements uh, uh, vandium uh, 3.756 it increased a little bit uh, but argue this uh, the increase happened in kind of uh, 
bad direction. It's it's moving away from optimum. Uh, zinc uh, was zero and uh, before or after. Uh, man, uh, manganese was zero before and after. Iodine here is something that I expected the better, the more expensive salt to kind of have better levels of iodine, but I actually had more iodine with the instant ocean. Uh, so 55 uh, micrograms per liter relative to zero. Uh, then uh, let's go down. Okay, uh, this is the iron group. We have chromium, uh, zero, zero, no change. Uh, cobalt, zero, zero, no change. And iron, zero, zero, no change, uh, all good. Uh, the barium group, we have barium, uh, 3.82 uh, to uh, point, uh, five, seven, four. So actually I lost barium, which and barium is, is an important trace element. So uh, the new salt, the more expensive salt did not kind of perform better. Uh, and uh, beryllium, uh, it was zero zero. So again, no no change. Uh, for silicone, I was I had about the same amount, one eighty uh, versus one sixty one. So no change. And then uh, the the last nutrient group, th these are kind of um, this this is uh, phosphorus and phosphate, and uh, there was kind of a big difference, but it's not because of the salt. So uh, before I switched, I was dosing. Um, I was actually dosing phosphates to keep my levels at around uh, 0.1 above 0.1 but I've actually uh, gave up on dosing uh, mostly because of laziness I've just I haven't been testing for uh, phosphates over the past uh, six months and and I typically don't like to dose things unless I'm testing so uh, I was keeping kind of slightly elevated nutrients by dosing uh, nitrate and phosphate uh, but I've stopped that while I was doing this experiment. So this decline in phosphate is totally um, expected. So just kind of overall to summarize, there really wasn't a big difference in my core or trace parameters. Um, things were mostly the same, or if anything, there were slightly elevated levels of the trace elements with the instant ocean. Okay, now we're gonna see some pictures of corals before and after the switch. This is a tenuous, um, kind of not a big change. Uh, the pink Cadillac, I did notice that the pinks got a little bit darker, I think. On the Cali Tort, I didn't really notice a big change. Obviously, like the Colony Group, it, you know, there was a six-month difference between before and after. Uh, but no big change in color. Uh, the Bonsai, I felt that uh, the, it got a little bit more purple with the Tropic Moraine Reef Pro. Uh, the Pac-Man, I think maybe the purples got a little bit deeper. Um, I think so anyway it, it's a little bit difficult to tell uh, this is a shockaholic this was in March it did brown out a little bit but I don't think that was unrelated to the test so it has recovered so now it's looking uh, as it was before uh, but I don't think it's you could call that a color improvement per se uh, the Marvin the Martian uh, didn't see any changes uh, major laser also I didn't notice any changes and what do we have next? Uh, this is the TNT Anacropora. Again, no big changes in the color when I switch from Instant Ocean to Tropic Moraine. Uh, the Jason Fox uh, Flame Fox or Fox Flame, uh, not a big difference in color, I don't think. And this is the uh, Rainbow Loom, I believe. Uh, again, uh, not a big difference. Uh, so overall, I, I would say that color changes uh, were minimum. Uh, this is uh, <laughs> this is a picture of my mixing bucket. One thing that I've heard over and over again about how the Tropic Moraine, uh, part of the like the perks of it being expensive is it doesn't leave a residue, and uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm not sure if that's really true in, in my situation. I found that it threw a much uh, more uh, significant residue relative to Instant Ocean. Uh, so it leaves this kind of yucky uh, <laughs> uh, caca looking residue on uh, on my mixing bucket. So I'm not really happy with that. Uh, the Instant Ocean, on the other hand, uh, had no residue in my experience of using it over uh, two years. So uh, here the switch went from uh, good to worse. Okay, uh, so uh, just overall, I, I want to tell you about my experiences of the switch. So. Uh, I want to first say that you know this is not like a real experiment. Uh, uh, this is just me switching from one brand to another, uh, an observation of one. Uh, there were many other confounding variables. Uh, things changed. I changed the aquascape. Uh, 
uh, I wasn't as stringent with uh, maintaining my nutrient levels. Uh, so it, it's, uh, and obviously there's no replication, right? If we wanted to do this experiment proper, we would set up uh, uh, several independent system, uh, like five at least that were running instant ocean, uh, five that were running tropic marine, and we put the same uh, frags, the same lighting, identical parameters, and kind of track them over time. But this was not the case. This was just the case of me uh, switching over from uh, one brand of salt to another. Uh, I didn't find any big difference in terms of how the corals in my tank look. I did lose three Acropora colonies from uh, during the time period that I switched. Now, obviously, I can't, you know, uh, I'm not sure why I lost these colonies. I can't really blame them on the switch or the salt. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm going to say that in my experience, th there was just, uh, there was no uh, there wasn't a substantial positive change right when when you're paying double for the amount of salt uh, that you're using I had hoped that I was gonna see something really tangible in my tank that would justify uh, spending twice as much uh, every time I do a water change and I did not see that uh, yes maybe a few of the colonies the color popped a little bit uh, but overall uh, there's just nothing uh, that was super obvious where you you looked at the tank before and you looked at the tank after and you're like wow this is really uh, a superior product the tank looks so much better uh, so uh, where am I gonna go with this uh, I'm gonna switch back to instant ocean salt I still have half of the bucket uh, actually a little bit less than half of the bucket about maybe a quarter of the bucket of tropic marine so I'm gonna finish it up and once I'm done I'm gonna switch back to instant ocean because you know for me I just didn't see enough of a change to warrant spending twice as much on salt all right, guys, uh, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, hope you have, uh, you're have you having a tremendous uh, 2020. And uh, please uh, stay tuned for upcoming videos on the channel. Have a good one. Bye.